All right, we'll start fresh again on chapter uh, chapter three, part fifteen. Uh, according to the PowerPoint and the classification, where are we now? So there's not much here um, today. We have last chapter, I hope, uh, for this marathon. It's very long. It's very. It's not something you can just finish in one go. You have to just come back to it after, you know, understanding a bit, and then come here and come back to it and revise again and see where you missed. Probably missed a lot, and then trying to you know understand what they're trying to give us. You know, like this is not something we. So it's not something someone will impose on you. It's something you have to do it. Uh, out of your own heart because you know you understand the benefits of t- helping yourself by not creating a grave for you to 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 to, to go in right you want to have a good ending so that's the path if you want to have a good ending in your life or break out of this conditioned your um, troubles in life um yeah it's not much we're almost there yeah Okay, um, yep, we can start recording about now. I'm just going to let this go. Good day, everyone. Today is our first Taishan Gaiyan Pen session of the year, 2024, for both the, the, you know, the world calendar and the lunar calendar. So this is indeed the first treatise on response and retribution for this year. It's such an honor and you know auspicious time to give this talk, uh, even though the words "respond retribution" does not incur you know, very positive uh, memories. But everything we do has trace, and everything we left behind um, will have an impact on ourselves and others. So, if we understand what we left behind and understand what we did uh, with a you know mindset of you know the consequences. Then we will naturally, you know, train ourselves to be more um, wiser and smarter in our conduct, so that we can get the best outcome for ourselves, and of course, everyone else around us. So today we'll continue the, um, you know, this long-running session for Taishan Gai Yin Pian Treatise on Response and Retributions. But before we start, as usual, we need to chant ten times Amitabha to settle our hearts. Ah, uh, me. ทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีทอฟอมีท
is something unholy. Why is it unholy? Because it's coming out of a heart of uh, negativity, a heart of harming people. In very least, it's a heart of poison, which is greed, hatred, ignorance in Buddhism. And using that poisonous heart to, you know, and, and refer to those people, you know, those gods, those uh, sages, you know, those saints like Buddha and Bodhisattvas, with this poisonous heart is very weird because those people are, you know, the proper one, right? They were they were called gods. They were being respected. They were being, um, uh, how to say? They were they were they were being loved by people because their heart is pure. Their heart is kind. They have no discriminations. So they are not poisoned, right? They purify people's heart. And what you what people use to curse usually is neg is negative heart. That's why they call it curse. It's poison. So using poison. And, and invoking something that is absolutely different, uh, which is the opposite of of curse, you know, blessings, love, care, is not right. Is an insult, you know. Less so to those gods and Buddha Bodhisattva because they already attained. They don't really care, or they don't need to. They will not take it to heart, right? If they are sages, they are well in their cultivation. They are not, you know, um, worried more of yourself your retribution on yourself like that kind of mindset you know you you kind of um taught every sentient being to use that poisonous mindset instead of in, uh, instead of um for following the examples of the gods or examples of those um sages you know good examples so this is a very um this is bad because of that because the effects of your action uh, diverts people from walking towards the true path. Instead, they were trapped. You know, they were they were misguided by these actions. So we need to define first what the first half. What is greedy, and what are they greedy on? So when there is word without measures, because we understand people are greedy. Yes, and in this case, we all talk about moderation, right? That you have a little bit of greed to pursue. You know opportunities, wealth, fame, um, everyone has that. When when it becomes too much, becomes excessive, that's where the word greed comes into picture. And anything excessive is always bound to um, have a very negative effect because you upset the balance, you upset the, you know, you, you're asking too much beyond your means or beyond your needs. Hence, we call it excessive. What you need, just enough to get you get you by, and just enough to keep you grow, going, growing, it's good. But if you're asking too much in wealth, in fame, in you know attention, etc., etc., it becomes clingy, it becomes needy, or it becomes you know greedy. Um, and and when it, we use the word greedy, it means you do not need it. Hence, greedy. Uh, and it does not benefit anyone else on upon acquiring it. Not even yourself. You will get indulgent and you will get, you know, health issue if you are gluttony, you know, if you're too greedy on foods, if you're too greedy on um, you know uh, uh over people's appearance or bodies, lust, then you get like sexually transmitted disease or you get um broken family broken relationship you get sufferings you get thousands of um, years of troubles you know legal battle even you know your reputational problem risk your reputation being ruined your um, peace of mind being shattered because you did not manage relationship well you know you did not protect yourself from being tempted to this you didn't protect others or people with you from you know being being broken, you know from from the relationship being broken or family being broken. So this is what we meant by greedy. And then to add on top of that, greedy without measures, without understanding that we need to restrain in order to preserve our energy, preserve our merits in order to grow even more merits. It's very important. So um, knowing when to stop is very important, right? If we say we are not greedy at all, it's very hard. That's a that's that's like something very rare, 
But if we say you can be greedy, but to a certain degree, and to a degree where you can, uh, like where you stop, where you feel like you're starting to, you know, hurt the people around you as well. That's, you know, that's like if you can't do the best outcome, which is eliminate the greed, which is what the sages did. We can try to work on restraining it, putting a full stop, putting a bottom line on this, not allowing it to get too uh, festering, you know, into something um, criminal acts or something harmful towards others. Um, for example, money, right? Like corporations, they say greed, non-stop profits, and the way they do things harms the environment, harms the society because they're trying to extract resources or they're trying to build something and then they... Maybe they set up them. Maybe they, you know, they extract the resources and harm the environment instead, just because they have to get another zero on top of their accounting book. And it may sound amazing. Everyone's like, "Yeah, I mean, what's wrong with that?" But when impact comes, it lasts longer, right? Because this profit comes and goes, and it's not like they're bankrupting. They they need it to survive. Most of the time, if they can harm the environment to that level, is because they usually. Doing it in a way that is too, um, too rushed. They didn't do it quite right, and end up harming people and the environment that people rely on or the animal rely on. So this is one very clear example of greed and its consequences. And the consequences is, you know, this is only limited resources. You can only earn this much at once, and once this is running out, everyone lose. Everyone loses. It's too long of a time span for people to see. But as you can see nowadays, things are getting more faster, including disasters. You know, the 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 disaster is getting closer and closer. The timeline is getting shorter and shorter. Right? Back in the days, you know, like a couple of hundred years. Yes, they have war, they have fights, but those are very regional、um, pockets. You know, and if you're outside these pockets of Conflict of concentration of you know people and power and all that, like big cities, you probably in a relatively stable kind of environment. So everything seems slower on and more sustainable. But now everything is compressed, time is compressed, space is compressed,、um, our technology information is compressed. Everyone gets more and more and more、um, tighter to one another in terms of space, in terms of time, and expectation obviously will increase because. We can use machine to create more stuff. So those are how to say those are、um, results of greed as well. And if we have no measures on top of it, using this infinite greed, using a finite resources to satiate infinite greed is foolish, right? You can has you can you can have ten car or eleven car, but you only have a pair of butts. One body, you know, right? You cannot sit ten cars at once, so you can have eleventh yak,、uh, yak, or you know, eleventh Ferraris or something or plane, but you can only go at one of those planes at in in one go, in one seat session. You can't go at once, all ten at once. So what I'm trying to say is, if we settle down and do not allow this impulse overriding us too much. We cannot say they. We have no impulse. We do not have impulse at all. We do not allow it to grow. That's that's the goal. But right now we need to put a stop or put a how to say like a, a resting area, you know, like a truck when they're trying to stop. Right? There's a momentum. They need to have an area where they can have gravels and sand to arrest the momentum from the truck, so they can stop and stop harming people. So if we're aware of that, yes, we may still. Have a lot of this urge and push, you know, and temptation stuff. But we can find something more meaningful or something less harmful to、um, reduce our harm towards environment and people around us, ourselves.、Um, but in this case, treaties on response and retributions mostly talk about,、um, you know, the mindset and also the action. And one of the most important part of I mean, most obvious objects of greed is wealth and power, and these are、um, sources of many calamities. You know, most troubles are rise because of greed, 
you know, it becomes hate because you can't get what you want. It becomes um, a very ugly, uh, very nasty confrontation because of, you know, people greed over inheritance, greed over something beyond their needs. Um, unsustainable growth, right? Unsustainable, um, unsustainable way of uh, acquiring wealth or acquiring power, acquiring uh, fame, will end up in crashing, you know, end up in 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 a mess, um, because you are not you're not you're not aware of your impact towards the people around you, and the environment around you, or the society around you. Hence, it will bounce back to you. If you're aware, you take it. You take its time, slowly grow, and then improve the the people around you while you're still pursuing your fame, wealth, and you know um, power and stuff. But you use it to help people. You actually, you know, increase your um, how to say, increase the, the area of effect that you have. You know, increase the effect you have on people positively naturally you acquire even more wealth even more power even more influence and fame but you use it for something that is benefiting everyone that is good for you and good for everyone and most importantly the purer your intention is you know the better the more powerful the impact you have even though the action may be small like you know um, giving people a uh, couple of coins, but you give it with respect uh, to those homeless people. You treat them like a proper human instead of just, you know, a homeless guy on the street. You treat them like a, like a friend, family. They felt it, and they maybe from um, I say, they might be one step away from committing suicide because of the depression, because of this kindness you saved their life, and pro- perhaps they can have more chance. They have. You know, at least chances to turn around while we're still breathing you still can turn around right when you're dead that's it you know yes we talk about past life next life but there's a very long timeline as far as we're concerned as long as you're still breathing right you still have a chance to turn things around the problem is when you know all seems lost because what people encounter is you know a careless society uh inhumane society or people just too caught up in their own pursuits they forgot to slow down and look at the world around them connect with them and actually understand wealth does not came just purely from this very narrow mindset it's also wealth of heart wealth of personality wealth of character a person without this wealth when they only own money or those very um very concrete kind of uh, very narrow kind of definition of wealth or power or fame or even love a very narrow explanation of that they could not hold it any longer they could not hold it enough hence the Taoists uh, or Lao Tzu you know they talk about um, if your merits does not um, does not correspond to the, the the returns you know the um, the influence, the wealth you have. If your marriage cannot hold the wealth, that means your character, you as a person, your behavior, your mindset, your worldview is too narrow. You cannot hold on to the wealth long enough. And if you have too excessive wealth, which is in this case greed, you, you could not hold it. That means it turns you rather than you turn it into something good. It turns you into a mindless machine. In in our case, consumerism, mindless shopping, mindless spending. That's still um, that's still um, how to say not the most harmful way. Worst case is you because you want to chase even more digits in your bank account, uh, way beyond your needs. It becomes, you know, whatever it takes, briberies, um, loop loopholing the laws, loopholing the the, even the religious teaching, you know, in order to get more wealth, more influence for yourself, uh, and you make people lost faith in, you know, the society. Make people lost the sense of, you know, like I can contribute to this society. This society has good people in it, and I can actually um, help this society. 
you know, because of your action, as you get more wealthy and more influential and more, you know, powerful, and you did not act properly in accordance to your, um, you know, in accordance to your need, and and grow it sustainably. I'm not saying that we should not grow any of this. If there's no point of growing all this, then we should not learn Buddhism at all. We should not even learn about this, right? It's very important to understand there are time and place for everything. There are pace for everything. The whole point of learning Buddhism is to get out, get into infinity, you know, and that is a very far and great goal. But step by step, in its own time, if we just grow it without understanding how much impact it has on others and ourselves, we will end up being crushed and destroyed by it. Right, we may grow too fast without understanding how we can hold on to this bigger and bigger wealth or bigger and bigger territory, so so to speak. And when you can see empires, they're getting bigger and bigger. They can't hold it anymore, and then they disintegrate from the inside. So everything relies on merits. Merits relies on one's character, and one's character relies on what did they prioritize most on. You know, what is their most important priority. If they only think about themselves, their own desires, and all stuff, they don't need that much, right? No matter how many advertisements trying to tell you you need another uh, phone, you need another car, you need another um, computers, products, etc. Uh, you don't need that much in reality. When you actually bought it, you realize I have ten shoes in my shoe or shoe shoe rack. I have eleven. I have 200 wardrobes. I mean, 200 clothing in my wardrobes, but you only wear it one at a time. Of course, in different locations, right? You have more style. You can, you can interchange and all that. But there's no, there's actually no need for too much of it, and and that's very how to say. I won't say controversial. People know it, right? They understand this is consumerism. That means you spend in the sick of spending. That is the result of boundless greed and. This is not something like, oh, what can we do about it, right? It's more about what kind of life do I want to lead? If I continue, you know, become you know, at the mercy of advertisement, at the mercy of these big companies, at the mercy of these fashions, you know, at the mercy of our impulse, you know, we were influenced by this because we watch TVs, we watch those beautiful characters, beautiful actors and stuff. We want to emulate them, right? And even myself included, you will be touched and you you want to be like them, you know, look cool, look awesome. But at the end of the day, you realize, okay, my account has lesser funds that I could have used to better use. And now I'm just looking cool for one or two seconds. And then that's it. It's sleeping in the wardrobe. It's sleeping in the shoe rack. What for? So, and then well, what does that really do to me in my real life, right? And if we understand that, we understand that, yeah, there's, there's, this is just very superfluous or very superficial um, kind of benefit. Real benefits, right, when you're actually wealthy, when you're actually powerful, when you're actually influential, you don't need to show it. You just exude that ability. And I'm not talking about one of those people that, you know, throw money at those uh, things or people and, and, and act like a, you know, king or something. I'm talking about people who really has that capability to regenerate a lot of wealth, a lot of powers, able to make people do what they want uh, without trying to, we are ordering them, you know. Um, and they are not, how do I say, latching onto it because they have merits. And if they truly continue to improve their merits and virtues, they will not use it and abuse it for their own ends. They will use their lucky position, their very fortunate, their very privileged position to serve people. And their effect of serving people is way more powerful than normal people's ability could ever imagine. Right? Like, you can only donate to one person from your salary, a couple of hundred dollars per month. But he can just build up entire center and set up entire staff to service entire region of people and then he can have such a huge media promotion of this good deeds you know whatever foundations they have and actually help people get back on track if they're genuine right of course we have seen that a lot of people use that for publicities 
or for shows that's another topic we can talk about that's also another form of greed um, and they'll find for lesson has mentioned about that as well it's um, on the surface and in the heart um, so in the end of the day if you have no merits if you have no no you don't have a right set of mindset right to drive your life and this external stuff that comes along to you you could not convert it into something of true value to you then you are the victims of your own greed you're victims of your own impulse instead if you can use these external resources to your own to add true value to you right? I'm not saying that 10 uh, fancy clothing or the, or the lipsticks or whatever all this stuff those things you can use by in your own means and on your own time, but real values, you know, things that generate even more merits and virtues. That means you actually help people. You actually truly feel the needs of people in this um, society. You know, those less fortunate people that can't even have three meals. Those are in the forefront of your mind. And that is part of the drive for you to move forward. Then you have found true wealth. And you will actually have real wealth as well to help you. Because this becomes your tool at your dis- disposal rather than it runs you. Problem of greed is it runs you. It's a self consuming desire. It just that's why they say it's bottomless hole. We call greed. Right? The more you get, the more you acquire, the more impact you have on others. The higher, the, the stronger is the grudge against you, and eventually you engulf your whole, maybe not this life, maybe next life. And you get poor, you get impoverished in next life. Those are karma. So use it to add true value, which is real merit, real virtues, true many actions, right? You can be donating, you can be setting up foundations, going all the way to this far remote area, actually helping them. I'm not talking about all these shows and promo is important, awareness, but it has to be genuine. If you came from a place of genuinity, you will do whatever it, you have in your power to make sure it actually delivers to the hands of people who need it. Because you have the people, you have the resources, you have the influence to bring people together. Of course, there are many tactics you can have and all that, you know, based on your wisdom to bring people together. Not every, You can't expect everyone to be sages and everyone's pure and kind, 100%, but at least you can bring out that part of people's in their heart and make that stronger than, you know, the, the we call it the realities or the desires or, or their, their own business, you know, make them more care about this society. That means you improve their, you give them opportunity to be compassionate. Your fellow wealthy people as well, they, they see what you did, they're like, you're a real thing, you're real stuff. And you know, even though you're sitting in this high position, well respected um, in your field, you know, you can be artist, you can be a famous big star, you can be a boss number one in this field, technology or or banking or anything. But you're able to actually still bring out time to serve people and communities. That's the opposite of this phrase. That's when you actually understand what wealth adds to you, and you actually don't feel like no one else is real because you are very real yourself. You don't allow this thing to judge, to muddle your mind. So that's a true wealth. That's a true power, you know, true empowerment and true um, respect you gain from everyone. First, being a self-respected person worthy of respect. And you can't become a person worthy of respect if you don't treat people with respect. And and greed is a self-engulfing attitude. That's why it's very important to convert it to something useful. So understand, you know, how we direct our world wisely and our resources wisely is number one. You know, we have the right directions, and then this temptation that tests us, we're able to pass through it. We're able to use it. Yes, I can have my luxurious lifestyle if I'm really in that position but at the same time I do not forget about people living in you know hardships right constantly there so you don't have to say oh I have to wear like bagels clothes or something like that you just need to 
let other people into your world. And hence, your greed will not be bottomless because you're no longer stuck in your own narrow perception of wealth and power. You understand that to have power is to give other powers. To have wealth is to give other wealth. To have respect and love, respect is influence, is to give other respect. You know, you raise people around you and people would like to raise you. They'd like to have you around them because you help them to improve their standings in their life. So there's a very mutual benefit kind of mindset. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about it a little bit too businessy in the side mindset, but these are out the use of wealth, use of merits and fortune. The actual heart is always um, having people in your mind, you know, keep them in your mind, in your prayers or in your chantings so that they may be elevated from their sufferings, all kinds of sufferings, mental health, Poverty does not have to be wealth only. That is the most obvious and immediate. It can be mental poverty, you know, which is what everyone facing, no matter their wealth. It's very, it's an epidemic, right? Everyone's feeling empty. What, what am I doing in my life? You know, they might get amazing salaries package, amazing lifestyle, put it on Instagram and share it to everyone. But yet, most, I would say a lot of people will feel empty on the inside after all the laughters and socializing and stuff with themselves, you know, looking at themselves, they will feel like this is lacking, that is lacking, I need to do this, I need to do that. Oh, what is this famous star doing? What is that doing? What is Amy doing? What is uh, uh, Johnny doing? What is uh, Susan doing? You know, I'm just bringing out random names. Um, so you are always comparing, you always want to one-upping. And this is also another form of greed, another symptom from greed. This is something that, you know, once you awake, you feel like, oh, why am I always trying to one up other people, right? And and when you are content with this external environment and inside, you want to enrich. So I'm mean, like I said, if you put the direction in the wrong place, it's called greed. If you put it in the right place, it's called vow. It's called growth. It's actually called progress, real progress, right? Why is real progress when you no longer easily succumb to greed or less succumb to advertisement, less succumb to anger, less succumb to distractions? You are more and more um, able to hold yourself together in face of this changing environment. You know, so many people meeting you, you're able to keep your concentration intact, able to say the things that is right or able to um, help people, even though you're fatigued. That is growth. That is the actual growth. And that one is limitless. Right, even Buddha, when he becomes Buddha, we call it the highest achievements. They don't stop there. They come back again and become human or even animals to help all beings because they are infinite. Right, they grow as the sentient beings grow. They grow as you grow because they see you as themselves. So this is an infinite growth. That is what we try to achieve, but we stuck that definition to the outside instead of the inside. The outside is the reflection of the inside. So all this wealth, all this power, all this respect that crystallizes into a solid thing or into, we call it tangible, even intangible, like, you know, you saw that why this person is charismatic, why I'm not, is because some form of their conduct brings that sort of, um, they must have done something. Because Buddha has talked about cause and effect. Why is person healthy and strong? have great strength in the past life because in the past they might have to do something to help other people, to give people fearlessness. So in this life, they're always courageous. There's always, they have a very strong body, robust build as well. These are not coming without any reasons. They are all positive, cause and effect. Why is someone looking beautiful or looking handsome or looking very, well, instead of using these two, we can say looking very respectable, very, very presentable. Like you will feel respect by looking at them, that, that face, because they have cultivated, well, the action is offering flowers to the Buddha. But to incur respect instead of lust when look, people look at your face, right? If you have a very beautiful face and stuff, but people only think about the lust, which is like greed after your body and all that, that's because when you offer in a flower, your heart is not in the right place. You're just like, I want to be pretty, so I offer flowers to Buddha. But if you I just read this. It was quite good. 
if you offer the flowers to the Buddha and you say, may every sentient being be safe from, you know, harm and hurt, you know, may they all be, you know, find refuge in the wisdom of their own light, of their own true nature, in the Buddha's guidance, and then you offer the flower, then you still look very pretty and handsome, but you incur respect. People will not think that way towards you. And you will naturally conduct yourself with grace and dignity. And you get the right kind of partner as well. That is not just purely based on, you know, lust, but it's also based on like really respect. The purer it is, the more how to say the, the more powerful it is. Um, the karma. So the action may be the same, but the mental mentality is important. Right? If you use greed to offer flowers to Buddha, instead of offering flowers to Buddha with a heart of compassion, with a heart of blessing, even just a simple, I wish my parents can be healthy. And I also wish the world's parents can be healthy. Like I wish they all be healthy. I wish people who suffer from maybe, you know, issues of, you know, whatever mental issues or something to be safe. So this simple but pure kind wishes that comes out from your heart when you're offering, you know, these flowers to the Buddha or to the gods or something like that, or prayers, you know, will incur the positive karma with multiple effect. So they are, they are like same karma but different qualities, right? Um, so understand this, there's no need for greed because those things only create more stress to be honest because you you have too much stuff managing you uh, you have to manage you actually put too much energy running around and manage your estates manage your uh, uh, you know all sorts of relationship work relationships socials and all that because you you're in the top rung of the society right what if this one is talking about everyday people same right if you want to grow and move up in your life no matter what what kind of pursuit you can like i said the general one like wealth influence and stuff or even relationships or even wisdom it, 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 it greed is some, first thing we need to work on and greed is the biggest thing greed is what forms this sahawo i put on and so forth sahawo cannot form without we're not form come into being without a strong desire you know, strong attachments and one of the strongest attachments is love. And I'm not, I'm not talking about boy, uh, man and woman, or even nowadays, you know, this romantic love between two individuals. But I'm talking about also between parents and children. Those are purer love, right? Those are, uh, because husband and wife, and then parents and children, right? And then, uh, or partners, and then they have children. Either way, if you want to continue to have, uh, I don't want to, going to that so and then you have the um you know siblings friends those are more like those are the multipliers i mean the x those are the result of this combinations so what i'm trying to um, get to is um this attachment is very strong right if you want to go really really deep yeah I'm not saying that parents should not love their children. Children should not love their parents. That's that's the that's that's why our world is so messed up right now because this actual bond is getting thinner, it's loser. That's what Buddhism is trying to say. It's saying that there are time and place for everything. And of course this is a Saha world. We have to use the rule here. But if in, in, in Buddhism standard we talk about you want to liberate from six dreams, this even the purest it says that even the purest kind of love uh it's actually not parents and children because there's a condition you have to be my children in order for me to treat you like a parent that means this unconditional love is a conditional unconditional the real unconditional unconditional is the one we've seen right in bodhisattva's teaching even in jesus even in in muhammad sometimes like if you understand the teachings they do the, the all these like big sages the kind of love is boundless they do not treat you any differently just because, say, you might not be a Buddhist or you might not be a Christian or Islam or any religions, they will not treat you any differently, right? If they are real, genuine sage, they will treat you equally. It's those people that comes after them or these followers that, you know, it's people, right? It's not, they are not all sages. People might 
twist it to their own interpretation for their own political needs and stuff. Those comes after. I'm talking about the actual person themselves. It's got to be that boundless love. That is what turns around this world. I'm talking about a very big spectrum, but back into our day-to-day, same thing, right? So greedy without measure has such a big effect. Um, like another form of greed is, you know, you always greed after this good environment, good vibes. You know, those was also greed. As in tan hao, you get to, I, I really like the word. It's how you attach to this, like people like favorable people, right? I have, this is my favorite people, my favorite groups. I want to hang out with them all the time. That's fine. But if you always think that it's going to be like that forever without understanding cause and effect, what makes this environment good, then it's another form of greed. And then it might turn into sour relationship because you're too attachment. You too, you, you, you're too attached. So that applies to parents and children as well. Too much, too interfering into their life or not even not uncaring of their life. They are both extremes that will sour the relationship. So I'm not talking about money right now, I'm talking about relationships, right? This is also greed, you know? Um, you always yearn that, 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 that love and attention, but everyone has different conditions. So in Buddhism, we call it all dependent, all phenomena arise from conditions. When conditions met, it becomes. When conditions cease to exist, there's no condition anymore for this to happen for whatever to happen, for, for whatever interactions or whatever things to happen, then it ceases to be. So, like human, right? We're only able to live here when we have oxygen and water. This is our most simple example I can take. If there's no oxygen and water, we're, we're dead. Right? We can say we adapt, adapt, but those things take thousands and millions of years. Okay? And those adapt is also the condition. Right? you got to have that right condition to adapt. And people are like, I don't know how it works. Even scientists was like, yeah, it's a given kind of mindset. What we say here in Buddhism is more thorough. We talk about cause and effect. Why are you human? Why are you animal? Why are you heavenly beings? Why are you uh, among humans? There are thousands of different personalities. Why is this person kinder? Why is this person crueler? Why is this smarter? Why is this less sharp? Not the sharpest two in the shed. You know, everyone has different karma. Hence, the different result. You cannot expect same result if you plant different seeds, water differently, fertilize differently. Even geography condition is different. That's for farming analogy, right? It's human, same thing. Your family that grow, that nurture you, and all that. So greed has no greed is a misconception of you know like if I keep acquiring without understanding how I acquire it, without understanding what's the impact of me acquiring a certain thing or attaching certain thing and then I just keep pursuing it blindly in the end of the day you know you exhaust your wealth you exhaust your influence you, things things are finite you exhaust the relationship you're getting to attach people get sour because you, you, you capitalize too much on the positiveness of this so Uji fun, right when used a lot, this top three in Chinese culture, the Taoists say that everything that goes to the extreme will bounce back. You know, if it too much of one thing, it will it will we will reset back to the balance point. Same thing, relationship as well. Too close, too tight. Familiarity breeds contempt. Come on, even English got this, right? Shakespeare got this. Familiarity breeds contempt. Too close. If you've seen someone like you know, getting out. Because we talk about day-to-day family, right? If you've seen someone like removed from the family after a few, like maybe they go out for study, you know, for work, in my case as well, you miss your parents more than you stay in there every single day. I'm not saying that you should separate or anything. It's just like, this happens. Even among couples, right? If you went out for a month or two, everyone, like your other half will start thinking about you. But if you stay in the same house every single day, looking at each other's face every single day, right? If there is no appropriate... Um, corporations between two persons like unword like they understand the boundaries they understand the the limits and also you know being playful and stuff in the right way then they will become either too annoyed or too removed so 
like everyone's so used to each other they they already like taking each other for granted so that's why greed is also very what do I say a reminder to be honest it reminds you like why is this thing not working anymore um, so greed does not equal to do not pursue do not take is when it accord with the condition is the best solution to greed I would say instead of saying oh you know I want to be you know I don't need to rely on wealth or need to rely on food or rely on social relationships no we all need that right even in Sangha where you need other practitioners to help you time to time not everyone can be Prayaka Buddha which is self attain enlightenment even with Prayaka Buddha he only can attain this much to go further up he still need Bodhisattva and Buddha and to have that he needs to contact with them still need to have that connections so everyone needs connections and the, the, the issue is too much or too little in this case too much greedy right is the problem so the best way is accord with condition. When it arrives in front of you, take good care of it, nurture it, right? Maybe it can be very long, decades. It can be very short, only one day, only a few hours. But if you take every single encounter with a gratitude mindset, no matter good or bad, practice that way, the mindset, you know, if uh, combined with, you know, everything becomes a thing because of condition, like our physical body, same condition. And then it ceases to be a thing when the condition has gone. Emotionally, we might reach that maturity a bit later. But if we understand this mind, understanding this teaching, right? Yuan, Yuan, Yin Yuan, 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 Right? I don't know how to uh, forgot the actual phrase, but it's part of the main teaching, the foundational teaching. Understanding this, you get free. You free. You are actually free in your current life right now. You understand what you should do. You know, even though what people say, what what you heard from others, you don't get too attached. Um. And. Of course, you will not take advantage of people because nothing comes free. Nothing is free. The cheapest thing is the most expensive thing. Right? Like the love from your parents, to be honest, is the most expensive thing. It's free, taken for granted. You're born and then your parents take care of you, etc., etc., etc. They're willing to take care of you. That's one good. There are many kids being abandoned when they were born because. Maybe it's a wedlock, you know. Or, and nowadays, even though they are not shy to say that they're born before marriage, but maybe they don't want the kids because of economy burdens. So that's already like eliminating a portion of population to get love from parents on the onset of their life, you know, the birth. And then when they move to hospitals and the, you know, educations, the not just the body, not just being raised but also being educated they need to get into the right condition of being educated so those those things right when you realize it oh i got it for free from my parents but it's actually the most expensive thing because there's so many things that could go wrong that you will not get it so understanding that we will not take anyone for granted and we understand that um you know um content with what you have who you have you know is number one in achieving basic happiness. And once you're content, your mind is settled. You no longer be at the mercy of advertisement or whatever the album coming out from any famous singers or something. Then you you will be more, how to say, you'll be wiser. Even in pursuit of these things, you no longer get moved too easily. You're able to see things as is. You're able to direct your life to the path of best outcomes because you can be able to see the coast you, the coast is clear you're able to see where you're going and then when you face pe people and things you have a habit of being content taking things in as is this is bad this is good but I don't want to add bad or good this is a person being angry at me this is a person making 
this remark at me? And then you're able to analyze what's behind the remarks. Is it meant to be hurting you or because this person is always habitually saying things without thinking? Then you, there's no reason for you to get butt hurt over it. So those are wisdom. Like small wisdom, but wisdom nonetheless. And with wisdom comes clarity, because wisdom equals to clarity, at least in the definition of Chinese uh, or the Sanskrit is wisdom is clarity, you know, 智慧. 智嘛, you understand, see things as clear as day. And your peace of mind able to hold things better. That means no matter what position you're in, you're able to acquire information quickly, you're able to act on it quickly, accurately. Not just things, but on people. What kind of words you say to the people. So I'm talking about the benefits of contentment, which is the which is the trick ailment towards greed, right? You're able to acquire the cues, not just from the things you're handling, the people you encounter with. You acquire the cues, Chai and Guanzi. You're able to understand what they what they're trying to say. You're able to you're able to understand because you stop stucking in your head. That's a problem I need to encounter as well. I'm not saying that I already reached there, but I can see the benefits of being content and alert. Being content means in the present. Being greedy means you're stuck in the future, right? Being hatred means you're stuck in the past. Being ignorance means you're closing your eyes and not caring about anything in the world. Hence, you're stagnant, right? Stuck in the present. And this is coming out of nowhere, this idea. I was like, yeah, being greedy, it means you're always stuck in the future. Oh, I could have 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. Being hate, hatred, of course, came from a past encounter or, you know, history, stuff like that. You're stuck in that past, so you hate because you think about what they say to you in the past, what they did to you. Um, and being ignorant means you're not paying attention, right? Or you're not aware. So your whole world is... It's a bubble. You can't get out. You know, you're stagnant. So those things are problem. Those things are poison. We call it poison. Those things are ailments. Um, we need to heal it. So how do we heal it? Right? Wisdom heals all of it, all of it. But um, to break it down further, being content means you're no longer stuck into the present uh, and the future. Say, I want this. I want that. I want this. Now I have this. Now I'm using this. Now I'm having this relationship. Now I'm having this job. Now I'm having these connections. How do I use it? Now you're present. Immediately, you, immediately your attention shifts to the present. You no longer get stuck into you know your um, pursuit of future. So you're able to see things as is. Hence, naturally your future will be brighter and clearer because present will become future. And you're no longer stuck in that hypothetical, dreamed-up scenario. You, you're actually living. And then when you're living, no matter where you are, what you are, you're able to see there are opportunities coming in front of you. You're able to use it. You're able to understand why you fail. Instead of saying, oh, I failed. Oh, no. You know, being, being, being defeated. So these are very, very easy to say. But when we encounter this, we, event, we mostly stuck either in the past or in the future. We are unable to grab it as is, right? Buddhism is all about now, right? It's not, it's not stuck in the past and stuck in the future, right now, because right now is where you can change your life. When you can change your life, if you change your action now, and every now that you're facing, you're fully aware, right? You're fully at, at peace, even you are being shaken or anything, emotion, you quickly bring back to the present. Uh, understanding, you know, the past, present, future, but you also bring it back to the present. What do I do now? And then you understand I can't do anything at the moment. So why do I worry too much? And then you do what you can do. Understanding it will come. And when, whether it comes or not comes, you know, also depends on your current condition. So right now you're planting the seeds. It will come then because you're heading towards that direction. Problem is if you keep thinking about that, you know, say I want to be famous, I want to be successful in business, I want to be you know, a great singer, I want to be blah, 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 but you didn't encounter the condition right now, which is practicing, going through this routine of, oh, I have to 
practice again, including this one, right? Practice and practice and practice, and then like learn how to articulate yourself, learn how to apply right thinking. You know, the eight noble path, four noble truth, eight noble path, right? One of the right thinkings. You keep applying day to day, practicing day to day, and then the the more skillful you are, the more how to say the the tighter the interval is, the more skillful you are. You already have content inside of you. And when the opportunity arises, that day comes, all you need to do is to unleash it. They give you a platform, you you perform it, right? Including myself, too many ch- times I was given that opportunity, but that opportunity that I, that I thought, yeah, I want, but when I have it, I feel like I'm inadequate because I'm, I'm always stuck in the past or in the future or ignorance, not aware at all. Uh, and and when you were given the opportunity, you're unable to perform well, you will feel like, oh, you know, I didn't. And then you, you, you get stuck in the past. So this is this is something that everyone, I would believe, have to uh, will encounter some some form. And this is also a reminder for us, right? Now, like, you may not know what happened, but right now, that's what you are. That's what you have. So stay in the present, understand cause and effect. That means you understand your present is very important. Nothing else. Cause and effect is not about what well, is interesting, of course, understanding what happened in the past life. But it's also about what am I doing now? And and then understanding right now I don't want to rush this. I will take my time. Or right now I need to add on, keep my pace up so that I don't get myself fallen out of my objective because I want to be that person. And I need to work hard on this expect this part of myself you know be more attentive to others when they talk to you be more aware of your surroundings in terms of social surroundings and actual environment be aware of needs those are where great ideas came from great music great invention they're aware of everything they accumulate this even including enlightenment collecting small enlightenment becomes Medium enlightenment. Collecting medium enlightenment becomes great enlightenment. Big enlightenment. Collecting big findings or big awareness and like big snippets of enlightenment. Okay. And then eventually you accumulate enough, it becomes unsurpassed enlightenment, which is the Buddha. It does not just happen suddenly you become enlightenment. Even pure land is accumulated by every single wishes that correspond with 48 vows. Amitofu, Amitofu, right? Amitofu, Amitofu. You need to go through every single Amitofu and be on present. Be content with every four Amitofu. This Amitofu, I feel terrible. That Amitofu, when I chant, my condition, my, my, my emotional state is, I feel tired, Amitofu. I feel happy, Amitofu. I love Amitofu. I hate Amitofu. Oh, this girl is pretty, Amitofu. Oh, I don't want this. This is ugly, Amitofu. For. Oh, I'm Amitofu. For. I'm able to pull it back in the present and accord with the condition, right? That's what Amitofu is trying to train us. And I myself will not... I understand what it says, but I never use it in my life because I'm not living in the present. I'm stuck, right? I'm feeling lack of energy and all that because I'm not bringing up the vow. And now I'm reminding you, I'm reminding myself, Oh, that's how it works. But then if we have not, if we cannot go through the boredom, sometimes we get bored, right? You're like, oh, what am I doing here? You know, like, I feel like tired and all that. When you're tired, you sleep and then you wake up, you're still trying Amitofu. Um, so people need reminder time to time. They know deep down. And if you lay out like this for them, people know, right? But when you live in your life, day to day, you lost memories not because you actually forget because you get caught up in everything else and then you forgot that oh after all this chasing running around what does that give you more anxiety more pain granted if this is your responsibility your job and stuff you can't just say no but do i need to stuck in that state of mind forever no that's where problem came in right you get depressed you get more you get more aimless, even though you have all this uh, work performance. Maybe you do well in work, you have been happy, 
but those things cannot last forever. You can't just stuck in, oh, this is me, right? This is only part of me. There are so many versions of you and you have to be, or be in the presence for every one of them in order to perform well, right? And if you're not present, you can't, you can't be there and develop it. You're always stuck in, like in work, in my experience, if you're not present, that means you're either you didn't sleep well, you didn't, like, this is the most, most common ways of losing your concentration, not having enough sleep, guilty as charged. You can't concentrate, you're not here. That's ignorance. You can't, you can't even pick up anything. You just run like a machine. And that's when you lost the sight of where you're going because you're too caught up in this machine stuff, you know, machine nation. That, that means you get stuck in this routine. So if you add awareness on top of routine, that means you still do the same thing, you still do the same repetitive stuff, but you're aware, but you're present. Yes, you do things better, actually. You do the same thing, but you do it better than last time each time you do it. That's when you're aware. Sometimes you might have the phase where you know, you switched off a bit. And you're like, huh? But eventually you come back, and then you're like, okay, I rejuvenate. I set myself back, put my sight back on track. That's very important. That's where you're actually building momentum for your next opportunity to come. Same for wealth as well. If you're not present, right, you might get distracted by spending on something useless or too caught up into this chasing the money thing and forgot what's the whole point of having money. Then you forgot the whole point is to serve something bigger than just the action of having money because the action of having money involves working a lot of things. You forgot that this is meant to bring you a material conditions that builds your life on. You still rely on material, right? We are material life, material beings. But we are also having spiritual needs and all that. And these things can be used for helping that end as well. So do not lose sight of it. If you lose sight of it, you get stuck in the routine and you get trapped in it. Another example is ant. I talk about this in the, uh, you know, in explaining the, in helping answering the Q&A from one of our youth group members. And then Buddha has mentioned in his um, story, in his teaching, an ant passed by Buddha one day and the ant lined up very nicely in a column, like military march. And the Buddha was smiling, kind of almost like laughing in a, in a very humorous way towards the, I forgot, I actually don't know, but he just laughed or smiled at these um, columns of ants. And then one of the venerables asking, one of the disciples asking the Buddha, why are you smiling, uh, uh, venerated one? And the Buddha says, this ant has been ant for seven reincarnations of Buddha, seven appearance of Buddha. That means each Buddha means one cycle of Dharma, right? From the beginning of the, you know, the Dharma spinning, when it's when it started, just like our Buddha started with the four noble truth, the, the Dharma started in this world, and then to the you know another nine thousand years to go for us, where the Dharma ceased to be known to the world. Um, this is one cycle. No, that's not the end of it. There's also the empty phase in between the cycles, Kong Chuang Chi, right? That this is just different. This is like a dark hole where there's no Dharma. Of course, there are teachings of morality time to time. That's how they build up the merits for receiving next Dharma. But point is, this is such a long cycle that takes billions and gazillions of years to finish one cycle. So seven gazillion years of cycles, they are still stuck in ant body. That is very, it's funny, but it's actually sad, right? Because they're stuck, they're ignorant. They're not aware. And we say that not with, you know, laughing at them because we might be the same right but we also need to understand this one as well so being greedy is because we are not aware if you're aware your action may be the same as other people you earn money they earn money but you earn money to use something 
to build something meaningful, something beneficial to others. Some people use money in order to get even more money because they just like money. So it becomes what? So Chai Nu. You know, it becomes a slave of money instead of actual wealthy person. Actual wealthy person, right, is a person who be who is wealth, wealthy in the heart, wealthy in, in the in outside and inside. And they use it properly. So when you see all the Bodhisattvas and Buddha, if they properly reincarnate, including our Buddha and our top 10 disciples, well, we talk about Buddha stories, right? Most of them born into the rich family. Why? They have merits, virtues. They, they are not attached to wealth as well. That's why they become wealthy. And even though they don't want wealth, the wealth chase them because they are rich inside. They're abundant. If a person is abundant on the inside, all right, and they, of course, precepts and all that, right? They understand the restraint and all that because they know cause and effect. Naturally, these good things will come to them. Even they were being killed or being beat. It's like one of the venerable Mogodalayana be beat to death, even though with all his miraculous power, that's cause and effect. He's also unaffected spiritually because he already attained Arahant. He's no longer bound by the flesh and bones. He just used his form to appear to the world, to teach, to educate, to inspire, to cooperate with Buddha in his propagation of Dharma. See, it's wealth. What's more health, wealth, what's more wealthier than health? And what's more wealthier than longevity? Right? And that's why Dharma is so precious because Dharma allows you to have everything that the worldly people want, but they do not get it, why they want it. It also extends not just longevity, it extends the existence beyond forms. So this is not some secret, miraculous, it's just because we are not aware of it. But once we are aware of it, life is not stuck in this flesh and bones. This is very narrow, right? So people chase after being greedy and all that because they thought this is it. So they're only stuck in that mindset. Not knowing, they are slave to this money slave to this, uh, whatever they are attached to, right? And end up creating negative karma because of their action in order, to, in order to acquire even more meaningless wealth. So, yeah, understand Buddhism is the real wealth. And why understand Buddhism is the real wealth? Because understand cause and effect, understand merit and virtues, understand how you change your fate and destiny, how you reset your path, understand the importance of being in the present, being content, being in the now, and actually, you know, overwrite your own mindset day to day is so precious. Even now, I just away, aware of it. Not fully awake, but a little bit awake. So, so this takes such a long time. Look at me, how long I took a break for. It's so hard to bring yourself back to the state like this right because when you when we stop this session and then you're back to your normal routine it's so easy to go back and then to come back again right it's a momentum thing you need to keep keep it rolling but many conditions might stop you or many situations might stop you right and it, depend, it depend, depends on how deep you understand the dharma that's why some people can still continue even though they broke for a while because they still understand the real benefits of doing this, right? First to yourself, also to others. If they don't fully benefit from these teachings, they can't continue, right? You first need to feel the good coming out of this teaching, the peace of mind it gives to you in the very least. I'm not talking about material only. And you feel like it actually gives me clarity, even though I may not, but they may not be able to use it fully yet, expose it, I mean, ex spend it yet in my other part of my life but this is actually beneficial for me to keep myself you know sane and happy then I'm, I can continue doing this with others despite you know it take a while to get back to it so this is this is very important this is what drives Master Ching Kong to speak for 60 years alright yes he is kind and compassion but just using the word kind and compassion is very shallow and hollow. If you don't feel the benefit of kind and compassion yourself, you will not use it to others. He was feeling the joy coming out of this kind of mindset. 
hand everything to the Buddha and Bodhisattva. Do not worry one thing about your path. 100% focus on servicing the sentient beings, all beings. And he takes a while to get there as well. And he actually benefited from this kind of lifestyle of leaving things to other people to worry about and focus only on Dharma teaching because his intention is purer. No longer worry about you know, money, food, allocations. It's all handed to either the lay Buddhists that follows him, takes care of him, or the Dharma place, the organization that he has uh, lodged with. Right? Even though people form organizations under his name, but he always says that I do not belong to one place. He's lodging with different places. Right? So that's, he realized the sort of freedom he has, the sort of enjoyment he has. Of course, he went through also humiliation, troubles, but he understand that this is repaying his debt and also training his view, persistence uh, in pursuing the Dharma because he felt the goodness or the potential of him, himself, in this pursuit. You know, he see himself being in the right place, right time, providing the most value to the world in this form. So he will not give up on talking Dharma, no matter where he is. As long as he's able to hold on to the, to the teaching room, he will always give Dharma talk. Because this is something he commit one thing to, to clarify it again and again to himself first, before he talked to others. So he benefited from this. Hence, he has that quality that a lot of people felt when he talks. I like his voice. Right? His voice soothes me because he soothes himself his heart of greed, hatred, ignorance with the teachings and use his voice to spread the teachings. His karma is, his voice is soothing and actually touching a lot of people. So that's powerful. Just by day-to-day -day persistence doing, he did that. So do we in our pursuits, no matter what we're pursuing for. Right? Giving a smile to people, you build up relationships, not without uttering a word. Right? Just being there, look at them, and then say, I'm here for you. It gives them comfort. It gives them, you know, confidence. So you don't even say a word, but you give them that confidence. You give them that care or attention. And it builds relationships. And these relationships will come in to use one day when it's your turn. So that's very, very, how to say, day-to-day, -day, but very important. So the second half, we will um, we'll talk about this further next time. But um, cursing, like I say, is coming out of heart of hatred or, at the very least, not a good intention, right? And using the name of God to certify your, like, to as a object of an object, as a proof of your curse, right? As a backing of your curse is stupid because. Those God, like the righteous one, gods and spirits, you know, that were like prayed by the people in our in our Asia context. We have East Asia context. We have you know gods of wealth, funly, gods of war, uh, which is which one is it? Gods of justice, like you know Guan Di or UFA, those famous folklores. They have actual real person behind it, real life story, history behind it, right? Finally, gods of wealth. Finally, is in spring and autumn era, I think. Preludes, Confucius, I think. And he was giving away his wealth. I mean, politically, he did not do well. He got chased out of court. And he went out and become a merchant, spread his wealth after he earned a first bucket of gold. We call it Di Tong Jing. That means his first big profits that will steamroll into next venture. Instead of using it for himself, he he dissipated all the funds to people in need and then went to another city, start the business from scratch and then earn more goals. Still remain the same. So no matter where you go, right, if you have the right merits and hence the fortunes, merits brings fortunes, virtues brings fortunes, then this fortune will still come to you. It will chase. So he got another bucket of gold, spread it to the local people 
went to the third city. Same thing. Sanju, San San is very famous. He's God of fortune. Why? Because he has understand how to earn wealth, fortune, by giving it, spreading it, distributing it. Right? Do it in accord to his mindset. His mindset is there. So he do it accordingly. And he actually understand this theory very clearly. How do one acquire wealth? And other, and he has all this boundless wealth in his mind, right? The ideas to earn money. He's aware. He's present. So no matter where he go, he will be able to bring up business idea to continue. And he also has capital, of course, because he's, he's having that. So we talk about this real life person. Um, and then he op- opportunity comes to him as well, right? You, in order to get that, you need to have people to support you and all that. So he did that. Repay the debt and all that. So I don't want to go too deep into this. So same for God of Justice, like, you know, those people are famous for their sense of justice, that, you know, fairness and their history, they have to conduct something like that. And they put them into the altar as gods. It's very similar to what Roman God and all that, but maybe at different qualities, you know, less vengeful, so to speak. Um, the one in the West, we have, you know, the monotheism, which is the, the God in Islam, the God in Christian, the Abrahamic religions. And those are commonly, um, if you look at the more more earlier time they have, those are represents of what is omnipotent, right? What is good, what is right. What is natural and it was used um, even though they not do not dig too deep into it they understand that this is um, this is something that is an aspiration you know someone who aspire to be get closer to God because it, it brings out the best of humanities right and let's not put the lens of what happens after people use in the name of the God they do all sorts of terrible things that's what it says here as well, right? People use this to sweat oath and demand, you know, the spirits to curse. So may God curse you. Or, you know, in the name of the God, I'll take care of this. We'll take back Jerusalem. So those kind of mindset is human foolishness, right? And because they don't understand the word God itself, they just take it for granted, follow it blindly, creating more hatred. And this is karma past life, no matter what name they use, right? Even in East Asia, they have this problem with, you know, different tribes, and they might be Buddhists, they might be Muslims, like Rohingyas and all that, or in Tibet and all that. So all these problems is more of people to people rather than the actual founder or actual teachers. So here, same thing, using the name of what's supposed to be good, representing good and kind, to serve your own purpose, is a huge transgression. It's used not just in the big context, also in family context, right? Um, justifying your negative or ill intention, using those righteous people or inspirational uh, sages to justify your negative ill intention. Right, is a humiliation to them, in fact. They will not take it to heart because they are attain, you know, certain level of enlightenment. They don't worry about that. But you will feel the consequences of it. Um, because you have affected too many people. Like a lot of people has misunderstanding on religion because of these actions. You know, people use that to justify wealth, power, consolidation. So this is the result of using this word, this name, recklessly to further your ends. Even in Rome, the Pope, if they don't use it well, they will have to face the judgment. That's why there's a saying in Chinese, in front of the hell, gates of hell, there's a lot of them are actually coming from monk, priest, kind of a rope, because they have Humid, they have like tainted the teachings with their call it unholy actions. What is unholy actions? So, say in medieval times, you have seen history, they use that to incur wars to 
political strife, you know, use politics to acquire wealth. In the name of God, you must repent. Give me money. So everyone think like, okay, God equals to people who abuse the power. So you humiliated the Bible, humiliated the Torah, humiliated the Quran, or humiliated the teachings you know, of the Buddha and of Confucius, including Confucius as well. Right? People use Confucius' name to consolidate the power in the imperial era. So the, what is supposed to be a more benevolent and equal uh, mindset, it becomes a tool to get into. Okay, it's 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 evolving into a very, very confined, narrow, mindset. It's very, something that is supposed to be inspiring, critical, and more free kind of um, teaching, or at least teaching of benevolence, was confined into a certain format. And then people use this to further their goals. Right? They use this as a way to get into government positions instead of genuinely trying to spread the teaching of Confucius, which is being kind and benevolent from family to the world. Right? And 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 a lot of them becomes a tool, political tool, not just by the Confucius scholars, but also by the emperors. So it becomes a tool of politics rather than a proper use to inspire people it, it, it traps people's um, enlightenment capability that's why it's good to have Buddhism to inject into that in the middle part to inspire the other religion together because it's it, it, it works so well together and unfortunately every time it falls into the hands of human it will always change deteriorate with time such is the nature of world because we are not having pure heart and pure mind um, in statistically speaking, right? If it is pure heart and pure mind, it becomes pure land because there is no pure heart and pure mind motivated by greed, hatred, you know, personal, mo- pers- uh, extreme selfish, too selfish um, ends and also this environment that encourages this, no matter in ancient times or modern times, you know, it becomes... becomes that yeah, it becomes uh, um, it becomes something everyone it, it make everyone doubt you know is there anything real in this world genuine in this world without anything real and genuine to aspire to everyone's fake getting more fake they think just you know live in this life enjoy whatever you want because there's no such thing as this because of the action of these people in the past. And incur more karma, negative karma in the end. And actually, when they die, they realize, oh, shoot, it actually has karma, it actually has effects, you know, after life or whatever, all right? And it's too late by then. So this is the, well, in the big astronomical w- way of seeing things is, you know, cycle of deterioration. When there is formation, there's also deterioration. When things becomes, it will eventually deterior- deteriorate and becomes stop to become. Such is the cycle. And to break out this cycle, right, is to reaffirm your goal and to listen to the teachings of the Dharma. If you have this condition right now, this helps. Right, gives you this clearer explanation. Right, all these teachings are meant to be guiding you, not just being good, but being fully enlightened and aware. If you're stuck at, I just want to be good. That's only a quarter of a journey. What happens when you no longer have the condition to meet good teachings? You become bad. So you don't know what is actually good. You don't know how to be good. You don't know the full extent of goodness, the real benefit of it and how the world becomes this complicated mix of good and bad and all these situations and how the world came to be you know why do we have this situation of killing in order to you know get ourselves resources we need to taint the world all these unfortunate side effects is because our heart this is a saha world this is a world of taint tainted world this world is why Buddha say it's tainted, not because this world is tainted by itself, it's tainted by our heart. 
and why we are here instead of in Pure Land is because we are not understanding and not fully the collective consensus is not the same as Pure Land or even Buddha's teaching. Right? A lot of people practice Buddhism, but how many people are genuinely following five precepts, eight noble path, four noble truth, understanding it to a point where it can use lively around daily life, not just following the strict code, like as a dogma, jiao tiao, no. Right? Confucius teaching as well. People follow it like a dogma, using it to stifle innovation, using it to stifle people's, you know, stifle people's growth. That is not the intention of Confucius. His intention is to have a foundation where the growth is built sustainably, right? And then when it's too much, curb it because it's too too excessive. Um, not using it as a political tool to suppress other people. So those are unfortunate side effects because of, you know, it is a tainted world. No one is like, it is not a pure-minded place. But at the same time, because of these sufferings, of this unfortunate, it inspires compassion. It gives a ground, a platform for the Bodhisattva to test how real are you? How strong is your vow in this world of sufferings, in this world of taint, taintedness, right? Because this is not pure world. People are not easily taught to be good. We laugh at you, we'll humiliate you and stuff. I can't take it sometimes, but if you are real bodhisattvas, you know, how far can you go? This is the best place. It's like when you play game, you have level one, level two, it's easy. This is like level 100, literally. One wrong move, you fall all the way down. One good, one move of wisdom, like one good move when, when you're aware and you do it right, you go all the way up. Mm. That's what they say, like in in Tibetan Buddhism as well. Like one of those practices, you either hundred percent and at least went into the enlightenment stage, or you fall all the way down. That's when not everyone can take that kind of teaching part of it. So this is most of us genuine in between, right? Trying to do good, but then our heart is not pure, and then we have this condition on the outside getting less accommodating towards goodness um, but at the same time we still see goodness and kindness in this life so we can't go into extreme into anything the conclusion we can get is we should strive to improve the goodness we have as much as we can that's the whole point of retribution's teaching is consequences of this negative act is really painful what's the point and if you can't be patient and you know let this run its course this problem runs its course you can't see through the things into the, its truest form i don't want to get too vague on these terms what we can do is do what we can now you know like do actual things that really meaningful for yourself and other people that do not harm them All right and then on your own place contribute gradually gradually contributes and then be open to the world's surroundings right to, to the world's change understand what happens into the world if it's your job or if it comes to you understand this happens and use this teaching that might not be useful for you now but it's like accumulating like insurance when time comes you need it you never know when you need it and this teaching guide you to the right path because it leads to your truest nature if taught correctly right if taught properly correctly how how do one taught correctly properly if they read this book, these teachings with the mindset of, you know, enhancing your wisdom, enhancing your kindness, enhancing your, you know, capability to do good, to be 
fully aware to be more um, to be a better version of yourself that's the first step that's the right first step if you just read it as if oh this is some ramblings of an old man in the past superstition and all that that's because you don't understand it and only when you go through the real life and understand oh my god so much troubles gone through you and then you find out oh I really can't get through this anymore this might help this might be helping so never 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 say never never get too quick to conclusion those are things take its course everything takes its course it will come in its own time we must prepare correctly while we still can because you know to breathe to leave is to change and to change should be always for the better but not everyone understand what is for the better people thought that this action of greed is for the better more Lamborghini is better more uh, fancy clothes is better prettier changing my uh, partners to prettier version of prettier woman is better but if we understand what's the whole point of doing all this and understand that you know what is real wealth what is real happiness and what do I need to do to get there or what do I need to change what do I need to concentrate of change my focus on in order to actually be happy and be at least content and understand that meaning of content does not mean stagnancy you don't do anything you're stuck here you content you're in the present you're in the present you open the door to your success you open the door to your actual to, to growth and that is happiness and you do not attach even when you're growing you don't attach to say oh yeah I always there's a saying right Juan de Juan, so you always worry about oh whether it works whether it not works maybe you have that mindset when you're doing it but you quickly snap out of it and say I'll do what I can to make this condition works into this results how far I get depends on my merits and virtues if it's too much and you know for me it might be a disaster I might not be swayed by it my children might be swayed by it so there's a reason why if you put the right mindset to it say you were stagnated or you were paused in this project maybe because the condition is not right maybe they are not ready for this right there's a reason why it will stop you do what you can but it will stop sometimes it does not work because maybe in future it will be a disaster if you do that so anything that seems bad is not necessarily bad anything that seems like good does not always mean good only when you're content only when you understand what you're doing doing your perform your responsibility well while absorbing these teachings absorbing your knowledge in your work uh, take and give you know it goes in equal measures you absorb as much as you let go all right and then you get better and more skillful on this when the time comes you're able to expand your ability to serve service the world right otherwise what what's the meaning of life if you're just being an island stuck in your own island you know your own bubbles you don't have to go out and socialize every single day and party that's not what i'm saying but you need to have some sort of connection with the world otherwise you won't you will not be here you will not be here if you have no no business here everyone has a business here all right let's put it that way everyone can accept this you have a business here even you're homeless sleeping on the street you have a business here you you are you you can be the catalyst for someone else's success or you someone else will be the catalyst for your success success to varies to many people but most of the time it means fulfilling what your heart wishes and then move on with your life next journey if you're not done yet you come back again trying to get to that level everyone is trying to reach a certain level for fulfillment right the right way to do it is first you need to have right condition and then you need to be content you need to be understanding of you know where you are in this life in this big universe and then um, back to your daily schedule what what should I be doing what should I not be doing what prevents me from servicing people better right sleep early 
helps you. You indulge in this TV or whatever entertainment, you lose that energy. You lose that pacing. And something might shook you in your life. How do you find yourself back to it? These are all homeworks. To find yourself back on track after you have this experience, you get more experience, you get better. So this is the first half. I, I usually expand a lot on, on first half. I don't usually go that long, but this is quite good. Um, in the second half, of course, we already mentioned, do not use the name of the God or name of the sages. Justify your own greed, hatred, ignorance. Justify your own um, negative acts, right? Truth cannot be forced on the people's face. Real life will do that for you. You don't need to do that. Cause and effect will do that to you. You don't have to justify it. And use curse is even worse. Uh, creates negative karma with yourself and others. So there's no point in any of this action. We should do the opposite. Okay, I'll stop here, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you. I uh, I think I'll continue one more session next week on Monday before I'm actually on a break. And then we'll see what, what happens when I come back. Um, for now, let's just Let's just finish this for now and take a break for everyone. Yeah. All right. Let's do dedication of merits. May the virtues and may the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion. Leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha. All right, thank you. I need to uh I need to break. See ya. Bye-bye.